Hello everyone, this is Marissa Redenball and I am your Juvenile Services Librarian. I'm here today to do a story time for you all on the topic leaves, specifically fall leaves, as you are hopefully seeing the leaves change outside around you. After I get done reading the books, Rachel will come on and she will tell you about the craft that we have as an option for you this week. The first book we're going to be reading is called Summer Green to Autumn Gold, Uncovering Leaves Hidden Colors. What kinds of leaves do you see in the summer? Usually they're green. And they gave you some examples here, such as black walnut, paper birch, silver maple, my favorite, ash, cottonwood, burr oak, honey locusts. Those are some of the very common ones we see around here. From emerald to jade and every shade in between, Summer leaves fill the world with green. The secret to their green color is found deep inside each leaf. Tiny parts in the leaf called cells hold even tinier parts called chloroplasts. And inside the chloroplasts is something called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment or color. It's what makes the leaves green. And so here they're showing you a zoomed in image. So on the leaf, zoomed out, there's a cell, there's the chloroplast, and it's green because it's filled with chlorophyll. Besides making plants green, chlorophyll has a job to do. It helps make food for trees and other green plants. When the sun shines on a plant's leaves, chlorophyll collects some of its energy. The energy combines with water from the ground and gas from the air to make food. The food then helps the plant grow. The green chlorophyll is also hiding something. It's covering up other colors inside the leaf. Orange and yellow pigments hide beneath the bright green. All through the warm summer, they wait. Slowly summer creeps toward fall. The air cools and the nights grow longer. These changes tell trees it is time to get ready for winter. The growing season for trees is over. The leaves stop making food. They don't need chlorophyll anymore. The chlorophyll slowly disappears and the leaves green color fades away. Now the hidden yellows and oranges are finally revealed. Some leaves turn fiery red, deep purple, or bright pink. These bright colors form, the in, form inside the leaf as the weather cools. Other leaves have brown pigments hidden inside. As the chlorophyll fades, these leaves turn brown. Many leaves have mixtures of yellow, orange, red, and brown pigments. The world is a rainbow of scarlet and orange, burgundy and gold. Soon, the stems of the leaves start to separate from the tree. The wind blows them loose. They drift to the ground, piling up. The fallen leaves feed the forest floor. They break down and become part of the soil. They become food and shelter for insects, snails, and worms. The bare trees sleep through the winter. This is their resting time. In spring, fresh leaves sprout from awakening buds full of chlorophyll and filling the world with green again. And then in the back here, they tell you some information about the different colors that we talked about and how those work with the tree. Okay, so that one, I found it was very helpful in learning about why the leaves change colors. And now that we know that, how they change colors and why they change colors, we'll start with a bit of more of a story. This one is called Mouse's First Fall 
by Lauren Thompson. One cool fall day, Mouse and Minka came out to play. Tumbling and twirling fall leaves fell all around. Look at all the colors, said Minka. And now you know why they change colors. Mouse saw red leaves and yellow leaves and orange leaves and brown leaves. Pretty. Look at all the shapes, says Minka. Mouse saw round leaves and skinny leaves and pointy leaves and smooth leaves. Yay! Let's run through the leaves, said Minka. Mouse ran and skipped and kicked and squished through all the leaves. Fun! Let's pile them up, said Minka. Mouse piled the leaves high. One leaf, two leaves, three leaves, lots of leaves. Yippee! What a big pile, said Minka. Let's jump in. Mouse leaped and jumped and plopped and rolled into the leaves. Wee! I'm hiding, called Minka. Can you find me? Mouse peeked and poked and peered between the leaves. Where could Minka be? Then out popped Minka. Here I am. Hooray! Hooray for Minka. Hooray for Mouse. Hip, hip, hooray for fall. That was a sweet little one. Okay, the next one we're going to read is called The Gold Leaf by Kirsten Hall. And I think this one, although the illustrations are a little different, they're done by Matthew Forsyth. I think they're very beautiful. In spring, the leaves returned. Soon, there was green everywhere. Jungle green, laurel green, moss green, mint green, pine green, avocado green, and of course, sap green. Meanwhile, a squirrel crept from its burrow, nose twitching. A chiff-chaff called chiff-chaff. A traveling toad set out in search of a suitable pond, and the first bluebell blossomed deep within the woods. Amid all of the newness and excitement, no one caught sight of something most unusual, something that shone and sparkled. A gold leaf. Now, it might be kind of hard for you to tell, but I'll shake the book a little bit. This leaf right here, it's shiny gold. Each wanted it more than anything else in the world, but who would get it first? A bird, of course. The warbler swooped in and plucked the leaf from its branch. Oh, how it would brighten her nest. But when she dove down to show off her prize to the others, a chipmunk snatched it and ran away. The leaf would look much better in his burrow, he decided. But then, a mouse pounced on the leaf and made a great escape, a golden blanket of his very own. He scampered home to hide his treasure, but before he could even get there, a deer stole the leaf right from his little mouth. She nibbled its edges. Even its taste was perfect. Finally, a fox seized the leaf. Because if everyone else wanted it, well, then he did too. But then the fox saw that he didn't really have the gold leaf after all. Tattered and torn, it lay in pieces at the animal's feet. 
The forest grew still. The only sound was the wind rustling the leaves, which sent bits of gold swirling in every direction. With sorrow, the animals realized that their precious leaf was gone. The days of summer were long and bright. The animals were so busy that they slowly began to forget about their gold leaf. Autumn arrived with its brilliantly colored leaves and many yellows. Waxberry yellow, bumblebee yellow, mustard yellow, candle glow yellow, maize yellow, harvest moon yellow, even yellow ochre, but none were gold. Winter bought, brought bare branches and short days. The animals huddled and cuddled. Some even went off to hibernate and fell into a deep sleep. And then spring arrived once more. The leaves that had been forming burst from their branches. Soon there was green everywhere. Pear green, pickle green, parakeet green, juniper green, crocodile green, lime green, and of course, sap green. Meanwhile, a warbler sat tall and alert in her nest. A chipmunk crept from his burrow, eyes wide. A mouse came out from his hole into the sunlight. A deer stopped in her tracks, and a fox crawled out from under a bramble, ears pricked. A gentle breeze blew. Something shone and sparkled. The forest was alive with wonder, but this time no one wanted the gold leaf. Their happiness was that it had come back to them after all. Weren't those such beautiful pictures? I hope you liked that one as much as I did. The last book I'll be reading today is maybe a familiar sound, but a little bit different wording. It is called, There Was an Old Lady Who Swallowed Some Leaves by Lucille Calandro and illustrated by our very own Jared Lee. There was an old lady who swallowed some leaves. I don't know why she swallowed those leaves. Perhaps she'll sneeze. There was an old lady who swallowed a shirt. It didn't hurt to swallow that shirt. She swallowed the shirt to fill it with leaves. I don't know why she swallowed the leaves. Perhaps she'll sneeze. There was an old lady who swallowed a pumpkin. She wasn't a bumpkin to swallow that pumpkin. She swallowed the pumpkin to wear the shirt. She swallowed the shirt to fill it with leaves. I don't know why she swallowed the leaves. Perhaps she'll sneeze. There was an old lady who swallowed a pole. She was on a roll when she swallowed that pole. She swallowed the pole to prop up the pumpkin. She swallowed the pumpkin to wear the shirt. She swallowed the shirt to fill it with leaves. I don't know why she swallowed the leaves. Perhaps she'll sneeze. There was an old lady who swallowed some pants. She started to dance when she swallowed the pants. She swallowed the pants to cover the pole. She swallowed the pole to prop up the pumpkin. She swallowed the pumpkin to wear the shirt. She swallowed the shirt to fill it with leaves. I don't know why she swallowed the leaves. Perhaps she'll sneeze. There was an old lady who swallowed a rope. She didn't mope when she swallowed that rope. She swallowed the rope to tie up the pants. She swallowed the pants to cover the pole. She swallowed the pole to prop up the pumpkin. She swallowed the pumpkin to wear the shirt. She swallowed the shirt to fill it with leaves. I don't know why she swallowed the leaves. Perhaps she'll sneeze. There was an old lady who swallowed some hay. She didn't say why she swallowed that hay. But she did it with ease. And then she started to sneeze. Ah, chew! Happy fall! 
she swallowed all of the things to build a scarecrow. And then she sneezed it right out. It's kind of gross. I hope you enjoyed today's books about leaves, specifically fall leaves, and maybe learned a little bit about something about them as well. I hope you enjoy the craft that Rachel will present to you next. Hi friends. So this week we have a, your curbside craft and your printable craft are pretty similar, but we have a fall tree with different leaves. So it's like a 3D tree. So for your curbside craft, you'll get a little packet that looks like this and it just has paper in it. So you'll get a blue piece of paper, a little brown rectangle, and it might not be the exact right size that you need, so you might have to cut it a little bit. And then you'll get the orange and yellow paper and you can cut them into strips about this big. So just cut along the edge and keep cutting. And then you'll want to cut them a little bit smaller. So little pieces like this, each strip will have little pieces and then you roll them up so that they um, are tiny like little leaves. So you just glue them all over to make like a big tree. So you'll roll it and then glue it down and then you'll have your tree. And then you'll do the same thing for your curbside craft, I mean your printable craft. So with the printable you'll get a sheet of paper with the strips already made on it and they have different colors and then you can color them in yourself. And then there's your little tree trunk. So you'll cut out the strips and then cut them into littler pieces and roll them up just like we did with the curbside craft. And then I just glued it onto white paper and then I made a little scene in the back. So those are your crafts for this week and I hope you enjoyed the stories and we'll see you next time.